This chicken's always stealing the cat food. So it's the funniest thing, we actually have a hay holder, hay feeder, and I have to put the hay in three different spots or these two wrestle it away from everybody. But everyone comes to the easy stuff first, so the two other places I put it on the ground they eat first before the uh, hay feeder. So I guess we're going to need to put some more of those in place. The ducks have decided they no longer live in the chicken area. So they are basically always roaming out and about. We stopped getting duck eggs, which should have immediately alerted me that somebody had sneakily made a mess and a nest. And here she is. Ducks are super sneaky about their nests. In the last week of uh, January, and we are just now getting to our garlic, which is not ideal. Should do that in late fall. Um, obviously we didn't get around to it, but we're gonna plant it anyway. And we had a really, really warm stretch here the last few days, so everything melted. Ground's not frozen and it's workable now. We are going to attempt to plant. We got three varieties of hardneck. Crandiscar Red, Great Lakes Hardneck, a, another Great Lakes Hardneck, and then two Softneck varieties, Transylvanian, the so two Transylvanians. Um, again, the Hardnecks are ones that store very well. Uh, Softnecks you want to use uh, as soon as you can. They don't store very well and they'll, they'll get rotten on you. But uh, so yeah, we're going to try to work up the soil a little bit. Like I said, <clears throat> it's very soft. You can see it's definitely not frozen anymore. I'm just trying to aerate the soil a little bit. It, you don't need it to be very deep. The garlic only needs to be a couple inches deep. And it likes loose soil anyway. Yeah, it's got like super loose soil, kind of like carrots do. Alright, so now that we've Got it all fluffed up and everything. This is real easy to get your fingers in. And you want to put this side down that connects down here. Because this is the part that's gonna grow the green shoot out the top. I don't have a measuring stick or anything. You just kinda push it in a couple inches deep. Cover it back up. Try not to compress the soil too much. Last year I Measured it all out and realized that it didn't do what I wanted it to. They were kind of all just grew together anyway. So not measuring this year. Not measuring this year. We're just going to kind of wing it because we just kind of put all of our garlic together in the same bin anyway. So the plan was to figure out which ones grew best and keep doing those. But as long as one doesn't completely fail, uh, to me, garlic is garlic. All right, so will that take us three minutes to plant all those? Maybe. And just because we prepped it properly, and um, I think we'll be all right. Uh, there are a couple that were sprouting a little bit, so those may not turn out quite as well because they've already started their growth process. Um, but yeah, I think we'll have a good garlic harvest, hopefully late spring. I do like the garlic. Yeah. You will always get friends when planting anything. They're hoping that you'll drop something for them. Say hello. <laughs> we are kind of cleaning up the gardens today. Um, obviously Brad's doing a lot of the work out there. 
it is cold, but it's not too cold. Um, so it's a perfect day to clean up the gardens. And I actually um, <laughs> took out a bunch of sunflowers um, the other day, just because the soil is just pretty soft right now from the thaw. Um, and so just good timing to kind of get that ready. And then we will also be doing some winter seed sowing here as well. January is a perfect time to do that. We really kind of hibernated the first part of January. It's our best time to take a break and start working on the house. Um, and I should show you some house updates at some point. Okay, just some indoor house projects. This wall was green and it actually looks different on this video, but kind of ended up looking like a lime green. And this is what we're going to, this blue. Actually, that lighting shows it a little better. So when you look at it from here, ignore the mess. You kind of get this lime green look, whereas this is kind of a nice soothing blue. So changing all of this to blue, I've just taken everything off of the middle shelf. <laughs> so give me a chance to clean off my top shelf at the same time, my cap, my countertop. I won't even show you, it looks bad. thousand years later. Starters are kind of a cool thing when you think about it. Most starters that people have have been around for a while. My friend Vanessa gave me her starter right before she moved to South Carolina. And that's kind of a neat thing because now every time I use my starter, I think of her and wonder how her sourdough is doing and wonder how she's doing. So it's kind of a connector in a way. younger I loved wintertime for the magic and Christmas and that holiday festivity that you had and then even after that the snow and school break and things like that. As I got older it wasn't quite so fun anymore. There was ice on the road, there was more slush than snow, just a lot of stuff that is no fun. Heating bills, that kind of thing. So it wasn't quite as much my favorite season anymore. But something really neat happened when we started homesteading and that was that winter became really a peaceful retreat into our home and into our family and spending time together, doing things that we have been putting off. And all of a sudden now I get very excited for winter because I know that any house project ideas we have had are likely going to be started and completed um, in the winter and early spring. I know that most of our dreaming is going to be done then and we love to dream together. We plan gardens, we plan crops, we plan projects, we plan the kids lives and our lives. We just do a lot of planning. We have many nights by the wood stove and I was just love that it's become such a time of hibernation for us because it allows us some much needed rest because we are working so hard spring summer and fall and we need that winter time to recuperate <laughs> We started something new this year and I'm really very excited about it. I know we are just in the beginning of the year, but it has already made such a difference for us. It's from 5.30 to 9.30, there's no technology, basically. There's no screen, there's no checking your email, getting on the phone, any of that. Everybody has to be out in the kind of main area around the wood stove. That works out very nicely because that's the warmest room in the house <laughs> during the winter. 
has happened is we are spending more time together. We are talking more together. And then we also are doing little family activities each night. It's not the entire time, but it is reading games, crafting or working together or cooking together. Consequently, Brad has finally started whittling, which he wanted to try. Xavier is a perler bead extraordinaire. Anastasia does a lot of modeling with clay. Berkeley is my baker, so you're gonna see him here in a minute. I actually asked Brad to turn a wooden bowl, which he did, and he did beautifully. I made a candle out of it. I used beeswax, fragrance, and wooden wicks, and it was a lot of fun. It's something I definitely would not have done if we did not dedicate that time. Today we're making popcorn. This is our blue one. This is our red one. We grew these. And we've got our popcorn, which is doing amazingly. From Shorty's and Funny Farm. From Strawberry Funny Farm, and yeah. what was the blue one called? I Blueberry, forget. I Something like that. Something like that. They're pretty small. This is about how big the blue one is. This one is how big the red one is. First we preheat this, right? Air popper, yes. We plug it in, we wait for a few minutes. While we're waiting, we measure about, we're gonna do about half a cup. This is a pretty good amount of popcorn, so. Experimenting with seasonings today, so we're gonna try salt, garlic powder, cayenne pepper. We'll also add butter. About three tablespoons. We're gonna put this. Now we're gonna pour in our butter, spread it around like this, so that we try to coat all of them. You stir it. <laughs> Onyx helped pick up the uh, stragglers. <laughs> now we're going to add some salt. You should do a pinch, maybe two. Next, we're going to add our garlic and our cayenne. Start out with about a half teaspoon garlic. Never tried this before, so we don't know how it will turn out. Now we're going to add in our cayenne. We're doing about an eighth teaspoon of this. We definitely want to spread this one around. It's very spicy. Man, I don't want to get it anywhere. <laughs> oh my gosh. Don't worry, I can cut stuff out. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody's gonna really enjoy that one. You wouldn't come out of it. <laughs> I'd like to see you try one. Find a really red one. <laughs> Try some now. He says a lot of cayenne on it. Hold on, stay right there. Oh, oh yeah, that does. <laughs> Let me try some. It's spicy. It's good. Holy moly. It's like the best popcorn we've had. No. Oh, it's good. I like the garlic with the cayenne. Yeah, it's great. Good job, Berkeley. Thank you. Mm -hmm.
this is probably, if everything turns out like I think it's going to, it's going to be our best harvest of the 10 years that we've been growing a garden. So <laughs> we're very excited. You know what the best part of videoing you is? I don't have to do the work.